So we are here to pick up a 1984 Corvette. Welcome back to video number two, 1984 Corvette. Uh, project car my son and myself picked up um, we have no spark if you saw video number one the problem is no fuel no spark picked up the fuel system uh, fuel pump so we're gonna we should have fuel once I finish cleaning out the fuel system uh, but right now I'm working on a distributor there was no spark put a new coil distributor cap and rotor in still no spark had the 12 volts going to the distributor but nothing going, coming out, going to the plugs. Ended up uh, testing the uh, pickup, I think it's called the pickup coil. It's a distributor, it's in the, within the distributor. And yep, it's called the pickup coil. And that tested bad. I ended up using the Haynes repair manual to troubleshoot that with the ohms meter. And that's showing that's bad. In order to replace that, you gotta yank the distributor. So. The end of video number one, I yanked the distributor, showed you how to get top dead center, how I get top dead center um, on the car with my compression gauge and uh, then how to remove the distributor itself. So I got the part in, it's over my little uh, bench or well, my little thing over there I'm gonna be work, uh, rebuilding the distributor on. I'll show you once we get over there, but I am going to replace, I'm going to be replacing the pickup coil and also the ignition modular, which sits inside the distributor. Uh, I had to yank the distributor out to replace the uh, coil pickup. That's basically a little thing that sits underneath the, I'll show you over there, instead of me trying to explain it. But anyways, car's been sitting about 15 years, I think at least 15 years. Uh, the kids already ripped out all the interior, trying to get rid of all the rodent, the rodents. I got the cats walking around making sure there's no more rodent no rodents coming around, coming out of the car uh once we get some spark and we then we're going to work on a fuel system to try to get the fuel system at least up and running and then we will decide what we're going to do with the crossfire uh fuel intake if we're going to keep the fuel injection or if we are going to get rid of that intake manifold with a fuel injection and go with a uh new intake with a carburetor i've notice a lot of people with this engine because there are so many things that can go wrong with it um that they actually yank out the crossfire fuel injection and they put a 650 uh uh carburetor on there so we will see it's my son's project car also this is more for him to learn also not everything is going to be recorded because if he comes out here and does not want to record on it i'm there's nothing I, you know i'm not going to force him to record on his car anytime i'm out here tinkering if i get time i'll throw the camera on and we will go from there so but i will try to keep you up to date as as we go so the car is in very rough shape the bones are good so uh help follow us along see if we can get this thing started probably not going to be in this video maybe i don't know it depends how easy the distributor goes if i get sparked if i get sparked once I put the new uh, rebuilt distributor in, then I'm just gonna start working on the fuel system and we're good to go, theoretically. You need spark, air, and fuel. And uh, if we have spark, the next problem, the next thing is fuel. I already got all the parts I need, I do believe, for the fuel. All right, well, I'll catch you up later. I wanna start rebuilding this distributor, try to get that pickup coil in there and uh, go from there. So I'll see you over on the table there. So here's the distributor. This is what we're going after right there. And I tested it with the ohms in video one with, uh, with the multimeter through these two contacts. And in order to get this out, this shaft has to be pulled out. In order to get that shaft pulled out, you got to pop that pin, that roll pin down here. And then this gear should slide off. And then this shaft should be able to pull out. So this is the pickup coil. This is the modular. So I have, I went to Napa and they had the modular in stock. So that's that and that's just a heat shield. So that's gonna go there. And then the part that we do believe is failed, it's right there. Oop, little spider. So, that's what we're aiming for. 
we got to get this. We also want to replace the the radio capacitor here, and that should be this. But there are four or five different ones that come up for this car that the automotive shop found, and. On other websites, I was only able to find an AC Delco. This is a standard. And like I said, standard had a bunch of different ones. It was a RC4, RC5, RC6, RC7. I do believe those were the numbers. This is RC7. So none of them matched it perfectly, the colors, but they all look the same. Not sure. We may not replace this. We could replace this if it doesn't work while it's in the car. But the most important thing is we got to take the distributor apart to get this out. So that's what we're working on right now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this off. And that is a quarter inch uh, nut right there. This is a heat shield. That's what that's called. Okay. So that's out of the way, right there. Then you got this, but uh, I'm gonna leave that for now and I'm gonna try to start popping out the pin down here. As you can see the pins coming out, go and this just popped fell off so this was facing up like that and that must lock in up here so here we go sliding it up okay now we got to take this off let me get a screwdriver This appears to just be sitting there. But we'll give it a couple taps, see if anything happens. Yeah, so it looks like it's pressed on right there, right on that hollow shaft that you gotta be careful of. So we're gonna just keep tapping it. These are just so rusted or breaking right off. Yeah, I'm going to say that that's bad. It is completely corroded, crusty, and rusty in there. So now we got to get that off the shaft somehow without ruining that inside. All right. Let me get a screw, better screwdriver. Can you see it? It's all falling apart and rusty. Now it's hot. There's a little retainer clip right there. Get that that little clip. Is there supposed to, I'm gonna have to get the book. Is there supposed to be grease down in here? Well, I'd like to clean that out. Let me get the book to see if I can. If I can spray uh, something in there to clean it. Well, it says to clean it, so I cleaned it. 
then it does say to make sure it's lubricated. So I do have some old engine oil here or new engine oil. So when I put that on, I'll lubricate that. I'll get it down in there. And if you read the instructions, it does say to take that clip off. So it pays to read the instructions, I guess. So this tab goes on that post. This is what lines up your distributor. This was that line that was in the bottom. So now I gotta oil this and drop that in there. It doesn't say what type of oil, just says make sure it's oiled. So, engine oil it is. And then they said if these teeth hit, loosen these bolts and adjust them accordingly. Number one, it doesn't tell you to take it apart to put it together. So I'm freaking smashing it, trying to get it on there. But they don't tell you it's supposed to come off in pieces. Well, come off in pieces. See this? Now they're saying you have to adjust those. There's teeth in here. These teeth? Well, there are teeth on this also. And it's hitting these teeth in here. So it says to adjust. There is no adjustment. This is all press fit. This whole system is pressed on another rubber brass grommet that actually came half out when I pried this, this freaking thing off. So now it's gotta go, this has to go this way. Here, you know what? Take something, you're gonna push on this a little bit. There's no, the only adjustment is those three screws. Nope, there's not, exactly. Wait, so what's holding the screw? This, look, the screw holes, there's no room in these screw holes for adjustment. That's what the screw holes are. Like that. There's no, actually this goes over to that. There are no adjustments. No room for adjustment. Because that took me a half hour just to push on. No, because I did it very, very delicately. And it doesn't help that everything's magnetic in there. See, look. 
There's a magnetic ring in there. You want to just take the hammer and tap? Because don't forget, listen, you're not moving this. And you're not moving this. You're moving underneath that. It's just attached to you know? No. No. This is attached to it. No. Say, look, you got to move this piece. Right, which is attached. It's this piece right here. Yes, 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 yes. It's attached to that magnet. Because there's a magnet underneath that. Making me buy the parts and I go back and go, yeah, so I tried putting it in with the hammer. I just broke, so you got to buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> and? broken. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I don't remember anything else here. All right, are we reusing this? Or do you wanna? We can try with that one if it doesn't work on the top of the Remember how it goes? $35 or something. This? Yeah. This oh, it's cheaper online. The real one's the... Yeah, yeah it's right. Cheaper online. I have a photo of it. Do you? On my phone, the distributor, yeah. All right, so listen. This says spread liberal coating of enclosed silicone yeah, compound right to the modular metal mounting plate to prevent damage. You want to... So that's this. I thought that was dielectric grease. Good thing we checked. All right, give me two seconds on the recording and just to sum up what the nightmare that was. So I probably edited most of this out, but to assemble the distributor, once you slide it in, you have to make sure none of these teeth here line up with the teeth that are on your, we'll call it the drive shaft. And it's very, very tight tolerances. It actually took myself and my son. We loosened these screws up and just messed with it back and forth until he was able to actually look in there and see very little space all the way around, even spacing. And then we're reusing the same radio uh, noise eliminator, or I forgot the name of it, but we're reusing this and we put a new modular in there. So we are now going to attempt to put this back in the car and see if, we, uh, if I uh, messed it up or not. But here is the old one. You can see it just completely fell apart and it was completely caked in there so that was definitely bad so I definitely know we fixed something so now the rotor once we get it in there will sit right like that all right so I'll see you back at the car we're gonna start putting this in there so we don't have they didn't have a gasket for the distributor so Austin's over there cutting a gasket from a bulk roll of automotive gasket that I have right there. And then my little girl is uh, supervising. And so the next step is we have to clean the mating surface off right there. And then we can drop the distributor in. I'm gonna move the light also once he's done.
All right, so I put the battery back on. We put the distributor back in. There's a couple vacuum lines that are not connected. Um, we're not really worried about the vacuum. Right now we're just trying for spark. Here is my spark plug or my spark tester down here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. Can you see that right there? It's right there. And uh, we're gonna turn the key over. We have, haven't have had spark in the car yet, so. Austin's gonna do the maiden. Austin's gonna do the maiden, uh, uh, turn the key thing. All right, so we're gonna look right there to see if there's any spark. Hold on one second, Austin. Make sure there's no tools. All right, give it a little bump. Yep, got it. And do it again. See a spark? Now I'm gonna zoom you in. Go ahead, Austin. There we go. So we have spark. So now the fun part. Starting fluid. We gotta put a battery on a charger. On this new battery. Half the ring, right? Either in park or neutral. Big difference. <laughs> We're in the living room. <laughs> Where we are. Alright, go ahead and turn the key, see if we have spark again. Alright, hold on. Go ahead, haha. <laughs> Give a guess. Open the throttle up. There, hold on, let me see if I can. Sure. I got it, I got it. We might have a too dead of a battery, go ahead. So we have no fuel, no fuel pump, nothing's hooked up. So we're gonna do another one just for ha-has. I'll open up the throttle body, throw a little f starting fluid in there. Go ahead, Austin. Try it. We got the ignition problem solved. Now we got to air out the garage. The last thing to do now, or the next step, is the fuel system. Let me open the garage door, so. All right. All right, I'm gonna, Austin's taking the spark tester off. So we know we have spark, we know we have ignition. Now we have no fuel because that's our fuel pump right there. This is our fuel pump. This goes, we have a new one over on the front of the car. The fuel tank is wide open because we pressure washed inside the fuel tank and it's all dry by now. But now what I wanna do is, we also have an electrical problem. You see these lights flashing. I'm wondering if those are flashing because the hood is still open. Not sure. But somewhere we have an electrical problem because of the mice or because the hood's open. So we got to track that down also. But we're going to put a charger on the battery. And then the next step is we have to, I want to flush out these fuel lines. The fuel lines come down underneath the car, top of the engine. I'm sorry. Top of the fuel tank, come down underneath, go along the side of the frame. I do believe underneath here is a fuel filter somewhere underneath here. So we're gonna put a new fuel filter on and then the fuel lines come up and it goes into here, goes through this throttle body, out here, into this one, back through this one. And this, I do believe this one is a return that goes back to the gas tank all in the back of the vehicle, just in case it's when there's excess fuel. 
So the next step now is we're going to air this out for like a couple minutes and uh, then we'll close the door again and uh, we're going to start working on the fuel system. Big hurdle. We got it to pop. That is great news. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy about that because that means we fixed the ignition problem. And that means I did not mess up this distributor too bad trying to rebuild it. Okay, well, let's get started on the next step. Fuel system.